Christ. Yeah. And so it was not as if they were riding as news reporters or CNN reporters and giant down things as they happened, but rather they wrote for a particular purpose to a particular people in a particular church. That's right. So That's right. because of this, they oftentimes would not write their stories in chronological order, but rather they will write it with theological purpose. Just let me bore you for a second. We're going to tie it all together. Um, they will write it with theological purpose. For example, um, you can have the same story in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. That's right. But they won't be in the same place in each gospel because they ordered their story according to the message they wanted to convey to the church that they were writing to at that particular moment. So oftentimes, what they would do, they would put a miracle story before or after a teaching of Jesus. That's right. Um, so it was not that the miracle happened uh -huh. right after or right before the miracle, the teaching, but they would place these miracle stories in order to highlight some principle that Jesus was trying to get across. That's right. So now in chapter number six of the gospel according to Mark, you'll find here that we see his uh, Jesus' thesis statement of the principle that he wants to teach because he says in verse number four, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country That's right. and among his own kin and his own house. And this is where I want some talkers. Because in other words, what this simply means is that it's around the people that you are most common and familiar with uh, that will not receive no respect you. But then when you get around the strangers who have no information about you, they receive you better than the people you see every single day. Yeah. Um, it's the people that that have no idea who you are, they don't know what your name is. That means they simply don't have information to judge you based off of. But sometimes, let's be honest, it's not our haters that are our problem. It's not our enemies, it's not all the people that that's talking about us, spread a lot of rumors about us, but rather it's the people that we see every day that know everything about us. Look, can we be honest? Yeah. Know everybody you slept with. Know everybody you cussed out. Know everybody you slapped them in their face and they hold it over your hand. And even when you start doing good down the road, they can't receive the good things that you do because they have too much information about you. Right, right. One more time. Just, just talk to our neighbors so we don't get too quiet. Tell your neighbors, say, neighbors, you can't go all of them. Because y'all know how people in your life will be. This is honest. Most that you see every day can be some of the most nasty, hellish, and dirty, and sneaky, and poor that you'll ever be in your life. Why? Because they just have too much information about you. And sometimes we go through life regretting everything we told our best friend. We're bringing everything we taught everybody that we hang with. It's all because that when we start doing good down the line, uh -huh. they start holding things over our head. Great. So we can never get to a good place within ourselves because people are always reminding us of our past. Yeah. Right, right. Let me go ahead and tell you something. This will help deliver you and help remove some stress off of you. Let me go ahead and help you out. You are not the sin that you committed. who has done something worse than the other because there's no classification for sin if you're a liar you're just as worse as the fornicator I'm not going to be a friend for two hours but y'all don't know anything along I promise you so it's always the people that you know that just know too much about you that always try to hold things over your hand and don't receive you for the voice that you are but this is the voice of the next generation we might as well speak now Lay hands on yourself. Just lay hands on yourself and say, I have a voice. I have a voice. Now look at a neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. That simply means that, simply that your opinion about me opinion does not stop the voice that I have. Does not stop the voice that I have. I'm sorry, people are going to but it does not stop the call of God on your life. But understand with the information that I told you before about them writing to convey a message so they will put a miracle before or after um, the principle that Jesus was teaching. We find now in Mark chapter number 5 uh -huh. we're introduced to a woman who has an issue of blood. That's right. That's right. Thank you Jesus. Yeah. Has an 
fish your blood for 12 long years. And understand that it is here that this woman, the Bible says that she has seen so many physicians. Uh -huh. She has seen doctors. She has even seen magicians. Uh, to try and to heal her, but the more that she spent money in order to find a healing, the more she tried to find the right person to try to make her better. The Bible says that she only grew worse. That's right. Help us, Lord. But the Bible says that she heard about a stranger by the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. She had no information about this man. She didn't know where he came from. She didn't know any lineage about him. All she is that this stranger that I do not know can do what I need him to do. That's right. Understand that she understands that this stranger named Jesus has cast out devils, has healed sick, has raised the dead, has opened blinded eyes. And so she understands that if I'm going to get to this stranger, uh, I have to press my way through a crowd. That's but understand right. now that I told you before that she has no information about this man. She don't know who he is, don't know where he came from, don't know his mother, his father, his brother, his sister, don't know nothing about him. But all she knew is that this man, that uh -huh. I do not know, yeah. has the power to do what I need him to do. Yeah. We find that in the Bible that every system has failed her. Family yeah, yeah. has degraded her. Ooh. Family has ostracized her. The doctors have given her up. Society has called her nasty and defiled. So she had nothing else to look to me in favor. Yeah. This is a good point to tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you ain't got nothing else to lose. Yeah. So you might as well try this man you do not know about the name of Jesus. I'm a little low to the cost to do me a favor with a real loud voice. This spring, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. So now you understand that in order to get to this stranger named Jesus, she had to press through a crowd. Let me interject something up here. That it was not the people that she had to press through. It was my, 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 the people that was a problem. But sometimes in order to get to Jesus, you have to press through the crowd in your mind. Yeah! Because you understand that there are some times that we are bombarded. I know we don't, but y'all know we go through stuff. There are things that crowd our minds on a day day basis. We got a lot of college people in here. Yeah, yeah. Crowded with tuition, crowded uh, uh, with midterms, uh, uh, uh. crowded with every joker that's trying to talk to me. Every yeah. person that's trying to get crowded with so much information. So now, watch this. It was not the people that was her main problem. But rather, she had been called nasty and devout for so long that she started believing that she was nasty. She had been ostracized for so long that she started to ostracize herself in her mind. So let me go ahead and tell you something, baby. The haters are not your worst problem. Your enemy is not your problem. I am. You are your worst enemy. Ah, go ahead and tell your name. Say, neighbor, I they might get mad at you, but it's all right. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor. Yeah. I know sometimes I don't like you. I know sometimes I don't like you. But you are not my worst enemy. You are not my worst enemy. I am. I am. That's the truth of the matter. You know you're your own worst enemy. You hold your back. You hold yourself back more than anybody else in your life. You are your worst enemy. So there's sometimes you have to push your own way through a crowd. But it's here that many times faster we push this text. Or sometimes that's the crowd because they didn't know Jesus. They blocked the, the, the woman that is your blood from getting her healing. But I got to give this crowd their props because even though they did not know Jesus, they still respected the anointing that he carried. Or uh, in other words, let's say it like this. They respected the voice that Jesus had. Yeah. Thank the Lord Jesus. Me. And so it's here now that the Bible says that there's a crowd, a great multitude of people following Jesus. So now Jesus is made some celebrity with a paparazzi that is following after him. And these people have no idea who he is. They have no idea where he came from. All they know is the fact that he can do miracles. That's right, that's right. And they honor him without knowing anything about him. Yeah. Lord have mercy. Uh, and now in order to received her healing, the one with the issue of blood. The Bible says that the way she did it was she pressed her way to the crowd yeah. in order to touch the hem of his garment. We just said here though uh -huh. that the power was not so much in the H-E him, the H-E-M him, yeah. but the power was really in the H-I-M him. That's right. In order for 
they didn't know the value that he had. But after he has been followed by this paparazzi who, not know, who does not know anything about him, after being followed by these people who pulled on the anointing that he had, after being followed by people who recognized the anointing that was on Jesus' life, he returns to everybody who knows him. He returns home. He returns where he grew up as a boy. He returns to the people that has known him all his life. And they did not even recognize who he was. They're saying, they ask a question amongst themselves. Who is this great man? Where has he come from? Where has he gained such wisdom? Where has, how does he flow in this oil? How does he flow in this anointing? How does he have this great knowledge? How in the world can he heal sick bodies? How in the world can he do all these miracles? But then you have some shady folks around him. You start looking even closer. And they say, in that man born? That's right. That's right. Isn't that the carpenter? How we seen him from a child up? Didn't we know him back then? That's right. For what he used to do, people know him. For who his brothers and sisters were. And watch this. The Bible says something so crazy. That the Bible, when they weren't receiving him because they didn't recognize him, when they understood who he was, the Bible says that they became offended by him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a good prophet in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Tell the neighbor, tell the neighbor, say, neighbor, yeah. I got good news for you. Yeah. That was getting ready to happen for you. Yeah. Everybody that did not. Everybody that did not see you for who you were. See you for who you were. You're getting ready to make them nervous.
Bible is done after this I work. When you think about a seed, a seed has in order to grow to its fullest potential, yeah. it first has to be buried in dirt. Yeah. 
help you up before you fall. Bible says like this, talking about Jesus. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. Meaning that I have not failed yet, but before I can even touch the ground, I have failed yet. Now one more time, let's give Jesus the biggest praise.